Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sasquatch Theory. Today we have Tom from Lake Wapapello here in Missouri, and he wants to share his Bigfoot encounters with all of us. Tom has suffered from a brain injury and some strokes, and he is still recovering to this day, so cut him some slack. Lake Wapapello is really remote, and it does seem like the perfect spot to have a Bigfoot encounter. So let's just jump right into this next episode and listen to what Tom has to say. All right, Tom, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today, sir? Doing fine. Good, good to hear. Tom, if you would, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your Bigfoot encounters and experiences from the very beginning, please. Um, name's Tom. I live here in Wapello, I'm on by the lake, here in Wayne County. Uh, I guess it all started a, a few years ago, back when I had a, a brain injury. I guess I, I got, I didn't sink with them or something, I don't know been tagged or whatever they call it I was i was a logger for like 30 years and uh the last year i worked i had like three or four heat strokes just one back to back to back i never did let myself recover so i went back out there and after it took me i had to let my body reboot i had to learn how to walk and talk and everything over again so it's pretty rough time for me. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. I, and once I got, once I recovered, though, got back out. When I started going back outside, it seemed like I just, I just started having, start having these encounters with them. You know, I seen their signs when I was out there in the woods logging, all the tree structures and everything. So I knew, I knew they existed, but I never, never did see one. Never did see them. But I, I had some episodes out in the woods when I was logging, you know, I got clubbed with a flying, you know, club for a limb one time that hurt me pretty good. That I should never got hit, you know, a limb came out of nowhere, hit me. That always shocks me. Wonder what happened. But I didn't put it, I always thought it was a fluke, you know, fluke limb, a dead fall falling out of a tree. Didn't put it to them. Didn't blame it on them. Now, after I think back about it, I think they got me. <laughs> I think that was them getting me. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, it came out. I was old. I had a skitter push the tree over. That went back on me. Pinched my blade. So I took my saw apart, and I was standing way, way away from the, the tree when he pushed it over. And like I said, I was a long way from anything. I should never got. I should never got hurt. You know, just a chunk, about a three foot piece of chunk, came flying and hit me in the hard head, hit my shoulder, broke my collarbone, dislocated my shoulder. That laid me up for like three months. I had to get my shoulder reconstructed. Got a concussion. And we just thought, you know. When the tree fell, it must have hit a limb and knocked it back on me. But it came from a totally different direction. You know, I've, now that I've had all these encounters, I see these things pretty regular. I mean, we look back, I've had over 20 encounters with these things. I see them all the time. I see one just last weekend out there on the lake, staying out there, staring at me. Okay. I remember in your email, you said at Lake Wapapello, you've had several encounters. If you would go back to the very beginning, when was your first time that you ever seen one of these things and what do they look like? What do they do? Put me in your shoes and run me through the experience. I just, I, like I said, I've had uh, the heat strokes. I can't stand too much sunlight or, or, um, so I fish at night almost all the time. My third night. I'll see him. The first time I ever seen him, when I was out there, I was jug fishing. So I had my spotlight and I was shining the water. And I was running from cove to cove. And I was always looking for like deer and stuff on the bank. I was shining up on the bank. And 
I shine way up there. I shine two sets of eyeballs way up on the banks. And I was, went back and said, man, it's pretty weird. It's pretty high up in the up on my side of the big tree. So I slowed the stopped the boat and I just kept shining the light up there. Then they, they stepped out around the tree. I mean, it was like eight foot tall. Then you know, they staring hard at me. Then they just put their hands up in front of their face. So I couldn't really see their face, but I mean, the eyeballs were like six inches. It seemed like they were like six inches apart and it was great old big, I mean big. Probably like the size of tennis balls, you know, great old big eyes. I was like, man, then I finally realized what I was looking at. And the big bodies, I was like, uh, it, was, it was this humongous. A jaw dropped. I was like, golly. <laughs> yeah. What so color was the creature? It was, it was uh, both black. Okay. Both black, like this arms down to their knees and so fingers look like this size of. Rots, you know, Frank or something. I couldn't believe how big they were. Outrageous. But, you know, of all the encounters I've had, I've never been screamed at. Never been hot. They've never, they've never done nothing, nothing mean towards me. You know what I mean? They've never, I mean, they've thrown little pebbles at me and uh, hit me in the foot and stuff. But they've never, nothing, nothing mean. They've never been. They never scared me off. You know, I've left. I've left them many a times. They just they intimidate me. You know, you have something that's twice your height sitting there staring at you. I leave. <laughs> yeah, and you would be night fishing on Lake Wap- Wapapella? Yeah. Okay. That's when I see most of them. Yeah, but maybe they I were think, watching you fish. I think, you know, I, I was talking to a guy in Arkansas once, and he said you fish with uh, shad, don't you? I said, yeah. He goes, that's when his friend sees them because he says uh, they come to the conclusion that it's, I tell you, nothing, you know, catch shad and cut up shad for bait. He thinks it's the shad that, that draws them. They smell the shad. Mm-hmm. My boat smells like shad all the time. Cut bait's got a little rank to it, smell to it. He thinks that's, that has a lot to do with the draw on the men. Because they'll come, they'll sneak right up to you walk right up behind me. Sometimes I hear them coming a long ways off and sometimes it's just, all of a sudden they just make a little noise, you know, a little grunt or a huffing sound. You look around and there they are. I mean, they come, they've come up to about 10 feet from me. Just right there. Just poof. Like I said, they never, I've never smelt them. I've never smelt them smell. I mean, you know, so a lot of people say they've, Smell bad. I've never smelled that. So I don't know if it's something they can control. I think it's something they control, I guess. But I've seen their eyes glowing without no light put on them. You know, just see, their, see them out through the woods with their eyes glowing red. Mostly red around here. Then there's some blue, some green. And then... A lot of orbs, see a lot of orbs out here on the lake going through the woods. I think that's their, I think they can travel like that. I think that's their, that's, I think that's them. I really do. Because right after you see the orbs, you'll see them. Yeah, it's very possible. It was um, yesterday at nighttime around 11 p.m. and I saw this bright white orb shooting through the woods and it was moving fairly quick and um people asked me did you have your camera but it happened so fast that you don't have time to react even if you did have a camera by the time you turned it on hit record it's already too late i'm gonna get a good camera this year i had them on my phone i had a bunch of film on my phone i had footprints all that stuff and then all of a sudden it just all my pictures disappeared i don't know what happened just go I don't know if Uncle Sam took him off my phone or what happened. But somebody took him off the phone. I had a, uh, the one time I I taped, uh, I was trying to get a picture of a 12-footer and an 8-footer sitting there side by side at, at night. Had the 12-footer had red eye shine and the 8-footer had blue or bluish green eye shine. 
And I just looked over and they was on a point on the on the lake while I was fishing. And uh it was right next to the water. It was probably about a hundred yards from me. I said, man, what if I wasn't even thinking about a picture for a long time, and they just stayed there and stayed there. I finally said, well, I'm going to get a camera out and get a picture of them, or get a video of them. And when I was trying to get it to video mode, my camera or my phone just started flashing. It just flashed, flashed, it flashed about 20 times in the bottom of the boat while I was trying to get it ready. And when I finally got it on video and I turned back around, the 12 footer was backing up the bank, but the 8 footer was still standing there. So I got it on video. I got him walking back and forth along the bank and then through the trees. I got probably a five minute video of him. And then uh, I was a member of a Facebook group then. They wanted to see it, so I shared it with them. And right after I shared it with them, all my pictures got disappeared off my phone. Everything I had, the footprint pictures, the Pictures of uh, I had uh, I f- this one cove in the lake. This kind of a weird thing. The they had like a, a chair or a throne. I'd catch them in every time I went in this one cove at night. I always check this one spot out to make sure they weren't there. If they were there, I didn't fish there. But I could feel it in the air if they was in there. It was like a a chair they set in. They made it out of a a root ball. It set it up in a, in a in a tree. And when I went in there, I'd see their legs dangling down from it, their body up in it. And they'd be sitting there with their arms up in the air, their heads thrown back, and their eyes closed, like they was praying or worshiping or something. And uh, you could feel a charge in the air when you went in there, if they were sitting in it. I don't know what they was doing. But you, I mean, you feel electricity in the air when they were sitting in there in that chair. And it was like a, where, you know, trees wash up together during the flood, you know, the, like three or four trees would be piled up on top of each other. Hmm. They had to, they put that chair on top of those trees. They left it there until I, I noticed it and started, I got out of the boat a couple of times, went up there and checked out the, checked it out. And then after that, they moved the chair. They'd, but when I come back in the cove it, at night, it'd be, that chair would be up there. And they'd be, if they either they were sitting in it or the chair would be up in that up in that root ball. They'd be sitting there, where they sat there. So I know they'd be in that cove. They'd be it'd be close to it. And that's pretty well. I yeah. thought about taking the chair, but I, I didn't. <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, what's another encounter that you had? What were you doing that day? What time of year was it? Like, what was the weather, and what what did you see? So my last encounter, I was had kind of just last weekend. I was out there during the daytime. I was out there fishing, and I was uh, just crappie fishing. I went out there. I was something told me to turn around and look. I was fishing a brush pile. Turn around, you know they got the lake draw down the winter pool right now. I, so I'm telling you, turn around. I turn around, look, and he's just standing on the on a bank about, about 150, 200 yards away. Just you know, so it, it's it's all cleared off now. It's probably 20 yards from the from the water down, you know, to for any brush or anything. He was standing right out there in the open. I mean, out out there in the open. Plain as day, just about a eight footer. I ain't seen no little ones from the lake. I just seen smallest ones I've seen is like six foot. It's about an eight footer. He was just sitting right there next to the water, sitting there looking at me. And I sat there and I was sitting there staring at him for shoot. I looked at him for a couple of minutes. I turned back around and started fishing again. I looked back around again at her. About five minutes, he was gone. Yeah, like they, like they said they just stare at me. They, I don't pay them that much attention. Mm-hmm. What did this individual much. look like? 
what did it look it like? A, that was a gray one. It was real gray. Hmm. I've seen some that there's like some of them, like there's like three different types here. It's like some of them got the cone heads, and then some of them got the round heads. And then some of them look like uh, like that Todd standing, you know, that the ones he got that real good picture of. He's got like the, I don't know what call it, like a round fur around their face. Mm-hmm. Uh, or something that looked just like that. Like, I always thought Todd Stan was full of shit until I seen him look just like the ones that he's got, but he's got pictures of. So maybe he ain't full of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. And um, the one that was gray, did it have the conical shaped head or was it more round? It was more round. More round. Was, okay. I think he was. He, one time I looked over, he's bent like bent over towards the water, like he's playing in the water or getting a drink or something. He's, then he stood back up when I looked back around at him. I was gonna go over there, but the, the way the lake is, it, it was too shallow to get in there where he was at. When we got it down low like this, it less than a foot of water. I got a jet boat, but it was still too low. I'd had to got out and wade through the water. I didn't have my rubber boots on. I was, I've been wanting to get some good pictures of footprints because down in the pool, I'm sure there's a lot of good tracks out there you know, around the edge. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. That would be a great place to find some Bigfoot tracks is on the lake, yeah. on the shoreline. And I imagine it's pretty muddy, maybe rocky in some areas, but it's got to be pretty it's wet and soggy. Sand, you know, sandy and clay spots around the lakes now. Yeah. So I'm sure there's a lot of good spots. Yeah, there has to be. Um, I bet you'd still have to look pretty hard, and it's a pretty big lake from what I hear. I've never been there, but I have friends that go down there and go fish. That's a pretty good lake. Yeah. It must be loaded down with big fish, too, but man, it's, I see a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, just keep running me through your encounters that you can remember, and um, we'll keep it going, my friend. Yeah. I was down there the you know, one of the major creeks one time out there fishing at night. I had uh had one just I mean just walk right up to me if the lake was flooded then. I just heard it just I heard it coming from a long ways off, just walking. At first I thought it was a deer. Then when it got closer and closer I said, No, it's too big for a deer, it's it's big. And it walked right up to me. When it got right behind me, I heard it the way it was hooping. I didn't even turn around and look. I knew what it was. I started. I said, I'm, I'm leaving. I got everything. I said, I'm getting everything gathered up. I got, got everything gathered up. And when I got I got the boat untied, and I finally turned her. I got the boat started, and I turned around, and it wasn't there. It was gone. And when I went up to the, uh, up to the uh, boat ramp, it was setting in a, the, there's a, Around the lake, there's a few spots where they got a chair or benches set up where you can sit there and overlook on the lake. It was set in one of them benches overlooking the lake, and I'm sure it was the same one. I said, oh, my God. I just, I way he said it, he's just staring at me hard. Gave me a, not a mean look, but just stared at me. When I went into the cove to, where the boat ramp was, there was people fishing on the, it's a ramp. So I don't know if he was watching them fish. There was a family with a couple little kids. So when I got to the ramp, I just sat there at the ramp because I, I didn't know what he was going to do. So I just I had my gun that night. So I just sat there at the ramp and waited until he was gone before I, I loaded him up on the boat. I didn't want to go there and tell them people what well, was sitting up there on that hill. They could have seen him. They looked up there. But I just sat there until I seen he was gone. I just fished around the boat ramp. Was I didn't want to, I didn't know what he'd do. I wasn't gonna take a chance that he'd come down there on the on that family. But he didn't do nothing. That was I, I've seen two inside that that uh, by the boat ramp there on that cove. One time I was down there the night when the lake was flooded. I was like the year before that. I was down there fishing, probably fishing. During the spring, and I, I looked up there. I was fishing off the bank that night. 
And when I looked up the bank, I said, man, I don't remember that, that big old tree stump sitting up there. And I looked up the bank, and it was close to about 15 yards from me. And then when I looked back again, or when it got daylight, that stuff was gone. I don't remember what, you know, it left sometime during the night. I didn't even notice when it left. That morning, I looked up there and it was gone. So that day, he got, he got down there and got close to me and, got, and left without me knowing it. But then when I walked back, when I went down in there and looked around, I seen the tracks where it sat down there, where it came down there, got right next to me and where it left. I had pictures of them tracks and showed my wife. And showed her them. She's she wouldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Does she believe you now? Yeah, she believes me. She's believing from the the first one I seen. Yeah. yeah, that's good. It's good to have somebody that supports you and believes you. Um yeah. what time of year did you typically have your encounters in? Summertime? Oh, the, the whole year long, most summer. It's been, a, been the highest part of summer. I won't say that. That's when I, I'll see most of the UFOs. Got a lot of UFOs here, too. In the highest part of summer, you'll see a lot of UFOs. And you won't see that many during the, when the UFOs are real bad. I don't know why, but you don't. And my friends, man, they, I'll take them out here once in a while. They'll shine their spotlight, my spotlight. They'll shine it. It's got a free bright one. They'll hit them UFOs with that spotlight. And we got, that's how I leave. But they'll get right over the top of us. Now I'll leave. I don't like that. I was in the Marine Corps when I was uh, in the early 80s, in 84. I had a, a bad encounter with a UFO. And I don't do, I don't mess with UFOs no more. <laughs> yeah. What was your job in the Marines? I was a NBC specialist, a nuclear, biological, chemical warfare defenseman. Okay, nice. Well, thought, what was your rank when you were there? I was a corporal. Okay, very good. And um, I appreciate your service, sir. So... After you had these encounters, what did you do about it? What was your go-to? Did you get a camcorder, some audio recorders, or did you just try to go out there and fish more to experience the activity? Uh, I never went out there. I don't know, I've never went out there and looked for them. Never went out there. To, well, take that back. When I first got this brain injury, I, I thought maybe, you know, I did. I thought maybe they could help. Help me uh, cure my brain, you know. I don't know how I got that in my, my head. That maybe they cure. So I did go out there and look for them the first time I, I went out. I went out of here on, on, on the spot. And uh, everybody says, you know, how hard they are to find it. Everything. The first time I went out and looked for them, I said, man, there's sign everywhere. I said, there's tracks everywhere. They weren't that hard to find. There were, uh, the sign was everywhere. The first time I went out, you know, I went, my daughter, I couldn't, that's when I didn't trust myself to drive. So my daughter took me out there. I told her where I wanted to go. Her and her boyfriend took me out there. They sat in the truck. Well, well I went for a walk. And I was taking all kinds of pictures of all the tree structures and everything I seen. And I was coming back towards the truck while I was walking behind me at first. I kept looking behind me, looking, trying to hear I hear something walking. But I could never see it. So I walked, started walking back to where it was walking. I thought maybe a deer was walking back there. Couldn't jump it up, couldn't see it. And then it was walking right beside me. It sounded like it was 10 feet or 10 yards from me. I still couldn't see it. But man, it was, there was something there. I said, man, there has to be something right there. I said, I didn't get excited. I was excited, but I just couldn't see. I said, man, it, it's invisible right there. It's got to be invisible right there. That's, that was my really first encounter with him. I was trying, like, talking to it. I know you're right here. 
you know, like so you said, it just never did show itself. But they followed me all the way back to the truck. I was, well, about eighty yards from the truck is where it stopped. Stopped walking with me. It sounded like a big one. It sounded like a pretty good size one. Then yeah. that's what I, that's what I said. Well, I don't think he to do that no more. <laughs> I'll just leave me alone. Yeah, and so it was following you? Yeah, she followed me always, like I said, 50 yards from the truck. Yeah. But it was invisible. I never did, you know, couldn't see it, but it was right there beside me. What time of year was, was that? That was in, uh, right before the fall, right before deer season. Okay. How far into the woods did it sound like it was? It's, uh, like I said, it sounded like it was like 10 yards from me. I walked, I probably walked about a hundred yards, or no, that's one yet. I walked uh, probably about half a mile through the woods. I had to walk with a cane then when I, mm. I first, that first trek I took into the woods. Yeah, I've had that happen to me before at a research area in the Mark Twain National Forest. It was a bright, sunny day. We just had that's Bigfoot activity the night before that. And um, I could hear bipedal footsteps, like a big lumberjack walking in the woods, like not even 30, 40 yards right there in the wood line. I was in the yard, but this thing was in the woods. I mean, there was no leaves on the trees because it was like February and you could hear it. And there was nothing. I was looking for like a squirrel, a deer. There was nothing. And you can see all the way down into that holler. And it sounded like it was right there. That, that yes, changed sir. my mind because I've always heard people talk about cloaking and I was like, I, I don't know about that. I've had some experiences where they disappear quick, but yeah, that changed my mind right there. You know, that freaked me out. I was like, man, it's, it be, I, mean, I gotta be able to see it. It's gotta be right there. You know? I was like, throwing, I was throwing stuff you know, in that direction. You don't think, see if I hit something, you know, but I wasn't hitting nothing. I was like, I, don't, I can't believe this. Scratching my head. I don't understand that. Yeah. I didn't. I, I have no conscience anymore over what's happened to my brain. So I don't. It, it takes a lot to spook me. You know, I just don't. I'm a totally. After what happened to me, I'm a totally different person than what I was. Like nothing. It, nothing really bothers me anymore. Yeah. I just. I just. I'm a different, just totally different. I'm totally wired different than what a normal person is, I guess. So maybe that's what intrigues them about me. Yeah, it's my I'm theory that yeah. the reason you're seeing a lot of them or why they're connected to you is because of your injury and um, perhaps they're not able to pick you up like they are regular people and it makes them curious about you, perhaps. Yeah. I got I offend a lot of people because I'll, I'll say what's on my mind, you know, just, I just blur it out. I don't hold nothing back. I, I ran off a few friends and a few, few relatives too. I was like, I can't stop, you know, I'll just, I don't know. Like an ADHD person or something, I just, shit just blurts out. I talk to myself all the time too. I'm out there at night by myself. I'm out there having conversations. I might be, I might intrigue them too. I don't know. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that in your South, emails. Yeah. Huh? I remember you telling me about that in the email. Um, yeah. What are you normally conversating about? Are you just talking about what you're doing or just whatever? Yeah, just whatever, whatever's on my mind. <laughs> yeah. And you said that has to do with your brain injury? Yeah. Yeah, I never did that before. Yeah. Yeah, never. Well, it, it aggravates my lady every once in a while because I'll be she thinks I'm talking about her or something. I'm just sitting there just talking. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to do physical therapy to learn how to walk and um, move again? Yeah, I had to go to yeah, I had to go to classes and all that. Yeah. What do you think? It's all messed up. <laughs> Yeah. What do you think helped you the most? Was it the physical therapy or just pushing through the pain and um, rerouting your own life and um, your your day to day life? I guess. Just time. Just making myself get up and do it. I guess. Just, at first, I just wanted to be a vegetable. Just I didn't want to get up. Just 
I just laid in bed. Then I started making myself just get up, you know, just, that was the hardest thing, just making myself get out of bed. I just wanted to lay there. Yeah. I gave up. Yeah. I'm I gave sorry. up for about four months. I just gave up. Yeah, I'm and sorry just, to hear that. Just, this guy had to get up and get out. So I got to get up, get outside, or I'm going to die here. Mm-hmm. And whenever you had your first encounter, do you think that helped you recover faster? Do you think it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think it did. I think it, even if he's still having these encounters, I don't think it's, like I said, don't spook me or nothing. I just, like, they're part of my life now, just seeing them. Like, it's no big deal now. It's just, cause I wave at them, talk to them. <laughs> Yeah. Do they ever talk back to you? No, I've, I've never. I've, I've had one time I had, uh, I guess it was mine. So one of them said I had trespass put in my head. That's when uh, I was really making a lot. I know I was mad out there. I lost. I was trying to win a fishing pole in a contest they was having up here at a bait store. They was having a, a contest for uh, this guy Every month, he was every biggest catfish was giving away a rod and reel. And man, I was really trying hard. I tried hard all summer. I thought, the last month, I, I finally won one of them. But I had three big flatheads on that that night, and lost every one of them. Was I was doing a lot of cussing, a lot of banging, into, throwing stuff in my boat, making all kinds of racket. And I had a jug going into a cove, and I ran back in there. Full blast. I wouldn't have been doing all that noise. And there was like, that was that same 12 footer I seen before. I seen him in there. He was in there right on the bank. And I didn't see him until I, I whipped in there. And he had a, like a six foot uh, tree in his hand. I mean, a tree. And it looked like a little club in his hand. And he was in there. You know, he was. I was, I was shining the light or spotlight in his eyes, and he covered up his face. The, the blind, he had a mean look on his face. And I said, "Oops, sorry." And I got the word "trespass" put in my put in my head. And uh, I just told him, "I said, I'm out of here. So I'm, I'm getting out of here right now." And I heard like a, Ugh. that's all I heard. And uh. I went back to the boat ramp and got off the lake as fast as I could. But man, he was big and that was as close as I ever got to him. And he was, I could tell he was mad. I guess from all the cussing and all the noise I made out there. Yeah, it could be. Maybe you interrupted their fishing. And um... I think think there's there's like two coves on the lake. I think they're like nurseries. I don't think they like it when I go in there. Yeah, because I get a, I just get a, a like a tingling or a vibe in there. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I feel like I'm not welcome in there. Are there certain areas on the lake that you experience more activity, or is it all over? Uh, there's two spots that there's always I always get activity in. Then there's other spots of the lake that I'll see them in there, but not not very often. But they're, I think when they're hunting or something, I'll see them in there, but. There's a couple of spots that, if they're around, I'll, they're there. You know, like I said, I think that's maybe their nurseries or some. Like I said, I've never seen no babies or, or little ones in there. But when you see do see them in there, you get I leave. You get a certain vibe that says get out. <laughs> they don't want you in there. Yeah. So you had have been pretty close to the lake shore whenever they threw the rock or the log at you. Is that correct? No, no I was uh, I was fishing on the banks. Okay, so fishing you're pretty close to the woods most of the time. You're not out in the middle. No, yeah, I'm free. I'm on the banks, pretty close to the banks. Yeah, and the areas that you have your encounters in is this a spot where like a creek flows into the lake or out of the lake? Yeah. I'm still- Back of coves and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. And have you ever talked to other people that have had encounters at the lake? 
Yes. Yeah, there's a, one of my friends. He's, he knows all about them. Well, I got a lot of I got a lot of people laugh at me and say I'm crazy. And I got uh, a couple of friends that say they know all about them. They know everything. You got one guy that he fishes out there at night a lot. He knows. He goes, yeah, they, they push trees over there. They say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they push the trees over. Yeah. He knows much about them. We started fishing together because of, because of all that stuff. He's the one that I told him not to shine the spotlight at the UFOs and before the night was over, he shined the spotlight at him and I said, Give me to the I was in his boat that night and I said, Give me to the boat ramp. I said, I don't mess with them things. I said it's I've had a I said I had a bad bad experience back in California with him. I said, Give me to the boat ramp now. <laughs> It's scary more than the Bigfoots. Yeah, and that's um, shining a spotlight or a laser? A uh, spotlight. Okay. It's a long ways off, too, man. It don't take them a second to get around right on top of you. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. So you see lights floating over the lake? Yeah, they're, they're pretty regular. I don't look up. Those. Don't draw no attention to them, you know. They they messed with me bad out there one night. They had me out there. I, well, I ran a whole tank of gas out of my boat, thinking I was going around in the flooded. Like I was in a flooded parking lot. And then when I finally got snapped out of it, there was a, a light right over me, over an island. There's a couple of islands out there on the lake. And I was down there by the dam. And they had me all all messed up. And I was, I was out there for like six hours, and it, it didn't seem like I was out there for no time. Lost time. All kinds of shit. Oops, sorry. They got, yeah, they messed me up. Yeah. Can you describe the missing time? What happened? Uh, it felt like I was in a, like a flooded parking lot with my boat. Like I was going through, uh, through fences and uh, yards. All kinds of stuff. I'm like, dang. When I finally came to my senses, I was like, there ain't no flooded yards in, on Wapello Lake. What, what's going on? I'm going to clear, suck it, the cobwebs out of my head. There's a, a big light right over me. And then it just sunk down over the trees and over the trees and, and went out of sight. And then, then that's when the, my head finally cleared all the way and I realized where I was. Like, man, I went to the boat ramp where I got the boat on the trailer. I picked up my gas tank and it was empty. And everybody that was on the, the lake, I was out there with two other boats of people I knew. They were long gone. We both we all put in at the water at the same time. And when I seen them uh, a couple of days later, they, they said it, I took off from where we all split up at the same time. They said they never seen me again. They said it was because we were all supposed to fish pretty close together. They said they never seen me again. They said I went off and they never heard my boat. And I should have been within sight of them from where I, I thought I was. They said, no, I just disappeared out there. So I don't know what, what happened. I don't know. I should have been right there. I should because where I, when I came back, where I realized where I was, I should have been within sight of them. So I don't know what happened. I don't know where I was. I just know I, I ran six gallons of gas out. And I don't think I was running full blast nowhere. Yeah, I was just putting. Because I was, I, at the end, I, I was just putting. So yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah, that is interesting. Happened. Do you feel like these creatures have ever followed you home? Have you had any experiences at your house? Yeah, I've had one right uh, right across the street from me. I've seen him sticking his head up, picking around a tree. Then my wife hears strange things at night. She, when I'm out fishing and stuff, she'll hear strange things. A dog barks. We got, I got a bull master, and she'll bark a lot. My, that's when my wife hears those strange things out there. She don't know what's going on. She don't go out there. She's scared. 
Yeah. So I don't think that bothers you. <laughs> they don't they never bother my dog neither, so I don't know. Yeah. Like she's on the chain though, she ain't loose. What kind the of neighbor's dogs? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. What kind of boat are you using out on the lake? It's a sixteen foot giant boat. Yeah. Jet unit on it. Okay. And um what kind of fish have you caught? Like what's the biggest record fish you've gotten out there on the lake? Uh yeah, like a forty pound flat is my biggest and uh a lot of crappie fishing, uh bass fishing. Yeah. And um how are you catching the catfish? Is it like limb lines or are you using a pole? I mostly pole fish. I catch them on rod reels. Yeah. I real I run jugs too during the summer for trying to get a bigger flatheads. Sounds like a lot a of fun. Flatheads. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And um my scariest encounters with those big uh, I've been down below the, the spillway, down below the dam. Mm -hmm. I won't go I I won't go back down there at night no more. That's what, my scariest. What happened at the spillway? Think, uh I'll go down there at night and uh I just get a, a really bad, really bad feeling down there. I mean I used to fish down there all the time because when it when they're draining the lake down, you know, the really gets high down there. And uh, it gets up on the parking lot down there. That's uh usually you can catch uh, some good crappie at night down there. Everybody catches little crappie during the daytime, but I'll usually go down there after midnight and catch very old big ones. And the last few times I went down there, it's it's really been bad. I mean, it's you'll hear a lot of splashing going on. Usually it's those beavers down there, but the last couple of times I went down there, it wasn't the beavers down there splashing around. It's, it's something else. And I don't know if it's big for it or not. Maybe something else. Because whatever it is, it scares the shit out of you. It's like, I don't know, it's, you tell it's, it's something humongous, something very big. And it's always coming towards. Last time I went down there, I came up the hill. I didn't even reel my pole in. I was dragging my pole and uh, dragging all my all my equipment, my tackle box, everything. I had to get up. I had to leave there as fast as I could. I told my my wife I wasn't going back down there, but I went back down there anyway. And I went down there. I, I didn't make five casts, and they were come at me again. And I got a. It's I don't know what it is. It's something big, but you hear it splashing. It's walking in that net. It's pretty deep water. You hear it. It's walking in the water. Splash, splash, splash. It comes from the far right straight across from it. It's like a bluff on the other side of the where you fish at. It's probably three and four foot deep. So it's walking in three and four foot of water. Yeah. And there's a nature there's a nature trail on that other side that people walk on. I ain't never been over there in the daytime though. It's pretty pretty uh it's pretty strenuous trail. Too strenuous for me to walk on. I'm 62. Too hard for me to walk on. Uh, so I ain't never walked that trail to see what it's like, see what's over there. But it comes off that trail. And it comes comes straight towards where I'm fishing at. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's big for it. I think it's something else. Well, yeah. it's a dog man or what it is. But yeah, it could be. It's, it's something mean. <laughs> yeah. And there is a lot of Mark there. Twain forest around the lake, huh? That's just, yeah, it's surrounded, it's surrounded by Mark Twain. Okay. It's all this Mark Twain, yeah. Yeah, it then seems got, like... It seems Mingo like, right down below it, too. You know, that, that, have you heard of Mingo? No, that I haven't. Oh yeah, so, yeah, I've heard of that. It's like um, one of Missouri's um only swamp conservation areas. Yeah, so Mingo and Duck Creeks right there, right 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 beside it. Joins it. Okay. Is that on the west side or east side of the lake? 
like the south side of it. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking for it now. It's, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to have a bigfoot in it too. I've heard of. I've yeah. heard reports of it down in there. Yeah, I've heard from somebody. It was not too long ago. They said that they've had activity there at that conservation area. Is that where the spillway runs into? Is that why it's a swamp? Yeah, yeah, it goes right down towards it. Yeah. Okay. Some of the ditches that come out of it go towards it. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of Bigfoot activity off of Highway 67, the Mark Twain the lake and um you're around a lot of areas that i've taken reports such as like greenville madison county um clearwater lake and i know that's all kind of far away but when you look at it on a map it's all kind of on the same side of missouri it's all right here yeah it's all like real close to you yeah yeah there's so many waterways there it just looks like lightning or veins coming out of the area yeah okay it's all real close yeah and um, how often do you go out there fishing all the time? I fish about, about five days a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's all I do, yeah. Well, I'm glad you found something to occupy your time and um, make you feel better. Yeah. Are you usually out there alone? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah I'm out there by myself almost half percent of the time. Yeah. Are you able to get out looking around the woods where you see these Sasquatch, or do you just kind of leave them alone? I leave them alone. I don't, I don't go looking for them. Like during deer season, I tell them, leave me alone. <laughs> this last deer season, they left me alone. They didn't bother me at all. That one deer season, though, they was, they was, I was surrounded. I think they helped me, though. I think they, they ran a deer right to me. <laughs> It was over with quick. I got a seven. They ran a seven point right. The year it snowed for deer season, which we never get a snow during November. And they it snowed that November. When I got to the deer woods, there was tree knocking going on. Oh, they surrounded me with tree knocks, man. I was like, oh no. I went. I was hunting like. Like twenty yards from my boat, <laughs> so I was real close to it. So, but I seen uh, two red orbs when I was going into the cove that where I hunt at. That unnerved me right off the bat. Then I had cows were running from something right off. You know, you don't usually see cows running from something. They were scared. And they was running from something. They came right down to me, got in a brush pile right in front of me, hunkered down. I just see their heads sticking out. You know, they're looking hard. Then the, right after that, the tree knock started. I was like, oh, no. You know, I just said, leave me alone. I'm just here to <laughs> deer. I just want a deer. Yeah, it sounds like the Sasquatch were hunting that day. Yeah. Well, that first, that's that first tree knock, the cows were pew, they gone. They, I mean, it's just a blur. Is down low on the ground and run as fast as they could. And, oh man, I was gonna shoot him because my buddy has his lamb was right there and he's got turkeys and chickens and guineas and goats and everything right there. And I was like, man, I better get them for they get because they come from it where his farm was. I said, like, the only reason I was hunting down there is because. I asked him about Sasquatches before and he he laughed at me. He said, "Oh, you're crazy. There ain't no Sasquatches around here." I said, well, he must have never had no experiences with him. I want him right there below his house <laughs> on the lake, you know. Yeah. I never I never had been back to tell him that, that there was right there. They was imitating his uh his uh peacocks. There's I heard him imitating his peacocks all morning, all around me. It sounded like he was all in the woods all around me. I was like, man, he don't know that. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have Sasquatch on their property and they've never experienced anything or, or noticed anything. And um, certain people that go there have an encounter or an experience, and it's pretty unusual that you can live there your whole life and not know that they're around. Yeah, he's, he's a former policeman. And uh, 
he, he, like I said, he laughed at me and said, hey, you know, you're not around here. They're right there on his land. Yeah. Perhaps they to, reveal yeah, themselves to certain to people. <laughs> but man. Yeah. Man. Well, let's see. What else have you encountered? Have you seen um, any more Sasquatch that you haven't mentioned? I know you said like 30 times, but um, is there any other specific encounters that you distinctly remember? Yeah. Uh, there's what I already said that my wife trying to remind me of something. They just they said I've had so many they just they none of them really stand out there's all pretty common to me. I don't know. Just Yeah. So if I went down there to like Wapapello, where would I want to camp at? The Mingo wilderness area or the spillway or some type of campground around there? Uh, yeah, there's a state, there's a the state park would be a, a really good spot. There's a, there's a couple of state park areas, but there's one over, there's the one with the swimming area. Uh, yeah, it's got a swimming area and, uh, it's got like a pavilion off to the side. It's where they got the, the cabins you can rent. I do. I hear them. That's where I, I do a lot of fishing right there in front of that. And you hear them screaming and hollering. Okay. Um, where would that be yeah. at? The the cabins. I'd like to rent a cabin out there and possibly stay a few nights. Is that the Redmond Creek Recreation Area? or? That's uh, the... So everybody, uh, like you're headed towards Shawnee, when it did be, I can't remember the name of that, what that highway is that runs off to the side. So. Yeah. Is it on the east side, west side, south side? It'd be on the, yeah, you know, like coming in from like York Village, it'd be on that side over there. So, uh, it's one something, one. That's my brain, man. I, just, I can't remember nothing. No, you're fine. No, it's not a big deal. I was just looking I, on a I, map. I was I'll curious. I, I can email it to you. Yeah, that's fine. That way we don't give away the location that I'm wanting to camp at on this on yeah, this yeah. recording. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, Yeah, I just think the whole area looks pretty hot depending on where you're at. And I think the spillway would be a good area to look. And, um, I think it'd be pretty creepy to camp out there at nighttime by that spillway. And that's the St. Francis river that kind of runs yes. by it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. St. Francis river. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spillway. It's, I won't go down there now without a gun. I don't, I don't ever take a gun with me because I don't ever want to shoot one. I think if you shoot one, you, you ain't going to make it back to your car. They're going to get you. They're never by themselves. That's one thing I've learned. Is when you see one, there's mm -hmm. another one close by. No, oh, yeah. the worst mistake you could make is shoot one. Yeah, you, won't, you ain't gonna make it. Because I've seen them out there swimming in the lake. They're, they're never swimming by themselves. There's always two swimming. Yeah, you know, you'll see them out there, and they can fool you when they're swimming too. You think it's a deer, mm -hmm. but it ain't. You know, so you think it's a beaver, but it ain't. You know, sometimes their head's way out of the water. Then sometimes, you know, you'll see a wake going through the water. You keep watching and keep watching. They go all the way across the, the lake without never coming. You know, they go down, they'll never come back up. You'll never know where they went. So, you, you think you're safe in a boat? They'll flip that boat. I know they can't. He said, I seen that one with that tree in his hands, and he acts like it wasn't nothing. Maybe it didn't weigh nothing. He's waving it around. <laughs> he got thrown it at the boat or swung it and got me in the boat from where he was. Yeah. Does it's your strong. wife it's worry strong. about you when you're out there? I don't well, she worry about me because of 
I had a few episodes of the boat. One time I started the boat and landed across the top of the motor while I was going down the lake. I got electric started on it now, so I ain't got I don't pull the rope no more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. scary to think that, you know, you could be out yeah. there on a big lake and something could happen, especially being out there at midnight. And yeah, like you mentioned, the Sasquatch, they can swim. They can swim like gators or bump your boat like a shark possibly and no one would ever know what happened to you. Yeah. I'm more worried about those UFOs than I am now. Yeah. <laughs> I know at Clearwater Lake there's been a lot of UFO encounters and um one night, one year, I can't remember how it worked out, but over like five hundred people reported seeing UFOs coming out of Clearwater Lake and they were all calling the police station. Have you ever heard of anything like that at Lake Wapapello? You don't hear too much about it at Lake Wapapello. I've seen them like we go across the lake like five foot above the water, just right above the water. I've seen all different shapes of them too. So, you know, people don't believe you, but I'm out there all by myself at night. After midnight, I'm the, I'm the only boat out there. Everybody else is gone. Usually after 10 o'clock, I'm the only boat out there. And everybody's gone. So. Yeah. I watched this show called The Sean Ryan Show on YouTube, and he interviews people from the government, high officials that um know things about like UFOs and um, secrets of our government. And they were saying that there is a UFO that the government hides that's so huge that they had to... Um, build something on top of it. He wouldn't say what it was, some type of like national park, but they were suspecting that it was like Bagnell Dam or um, some type of big lake. And that makes me wonder, you know, why they dam some of these lakes or, you know, create them. Then possibly they're trying to hide something huge because you hear about these reports of UFOs coming out of the lakes and it seems to be connected to the water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, and when I seen that one out in California, I go, man, I, I was in privy to a lot of top secret stuff when I was in the Marine Corps. And I go, man, well, I know that we were supposed to be so far advanced, you know, from what we know and what we have, or whatever that was I seen out there, that was not from this world, <laughs> you know. That was definitely either from the future or from out of space or something. That was totally, well, that was treetop high. That's the closest I've ever been to one. And that was, I don't know what happened out there, but hopefully I wasn't. They didn't abduct me. I hope I wasn't abducted. <laughs> yeah. That was close. What did you see? What it, what it looked like? It was, uh, I was in, I was out there. We went on, uh, a motorcycle rally out there. I was up there, Big Bear, Big Bear Mountain, in California. And uh, I was in my last thing I remember. I went to my tent, was sleeping, and then I was awake. I was, I don't remember getting out of my tent or nothing. I was awake and I was looking up, and this UFO was right at the treetops. It was about uh, thirty feet across, and in the center of it. It had uh, lights going around, like red, green, and blue lights going around in circles at the bottom of it. And it was going super slow, not making a sound. And for some reason, I was chased. I chased it when it started getting up, getting getting up speeds. And I run down the this. We was camping on a out in the woods on a logging road. You know, so we wouldn't have to pay no money for nothing, you know, just camping out. I took off running after it, and I, before I, I realized what was going on, I said, what am I doing? And I took off running back to the, and jumped in my tent like I was going to hide from it in my damn tent. But, well, 5.30, when it started getting light in the morning, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I was a shit, I was a nervous wreck. I was probably, like, 24 years old then. And yeah, I was like I said, I was a nervous wreck. And I didn't tell nobody I didn't tell nobody what I seen. I think another guy must have seen it too, because when I said I was leaving, we just got there the day before. I left my girlfriend there and I just all I thing I took when I left was my sleeping bag. 
I left my girlfriend. I left everything. And uh, another old guy that was there, he goes, I'm leaving too. So I think he's seen it too. We didn't talk to, I didn't tell nobody what I saw. And I just got on my bike, folded up my sleeping bag, put it on the bike, and left. Like by 6 o'clock, I was on the road. I was leaving. And he was right beside me. And we didn't say nothing to each other until all the way back to, I was in Oceanside, California. Didn't say nothing until I hit Oceanside, California. When we hit town, he went one way and I went the other way. I never seen him again the rest of my life. And I didn't say nothing until I hit, until I got back to Missouri. I took this before I told anybody what I saw. But man, this book just scared the shit out of me. It scared me. Yeah, I can you know, imagine. Marine, you know, you get scared like that. Yeah. And um, totally unnerved me. Didn't know what was going on. Ray didn't believe in nothing like that until right then, until that. So I seen it. Yeah, that's interesting. I opened the door, opened the door for everything. Then I believed everything. <laughs> if that was real, then everything's real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's freaky. And um in the Mingo National Wildlife Refuge, are you even able to walk around or is it so swampy that you can't even get through there? Like no, without... you can walk around. They got yeah, you can walk around in there. They got you can fish in there and take uh tours and you drive cars through it. Oh, okay. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got roads all through it. Is it, behind it. Is that area pretty populated like Lake of the Ozarks or is it pretty um Quiet, you know, is it quiet there? It's quiet here. It's, it ain't like those arcs. Yeah, that's good. I think that's why we got so much, like on the core, you know, the core's got so much land all the way around the lake. It's no houses on it or nothing. You know, they got their property. So it's. No, okay. So there's not yeah. people living all over the lake shore? No, no. Then, the, yeah, there's nobody right on the lake. Okay. And then there's, then there's the Mark Twain butts right up against that, right mm -hmm. against that, or the state parks against it. So it's pretty quiet around. Like it ain't like it used to be. Near. It used to be pretty busy lake, and anymore it's 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 quiet lake. Yeah. There's hardly anybody on it. That's good. Okay. Do you have anything else you'd like to share? or is that pretty much everything in a nutshell? I don't want to keep you on too long. I know you got things you want to do today. That's probably about it, I guess. Uh, I just, I know why they, why I see so many of them, I guess. It's, I wonder why. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. Why other people don't see them. I think other people just don't ain't looking. You know, they don't look that hard for them or something. It's, it you look be. through the tree, you, you, you can't see them. You know, you, they're there. So I tell my friends, friends don't say, you know, they go, oh, they're not out there. So go camping with me. Don't bring your guns. Just go camping. I'll show you one. <laughs> they go, no. Nah. They want to bring their guns. I said, no, I don't want you shooting at them. We'll, we won't survive. So just go camping. No, no one took me up on that. Yeah seems like they pick on certain people or certain individuals are marked by, you know, the Sasquatch or possibly UFO activity. It's really hard to say, but that's why I call my channel Sasquatch Theory, just because no one really knows, even if they make bold claims that, you know, they do certain things for whatever reason. Nobody really knows. I think they are supernatural, though. I, think, I don't think they're, I don't know, there's, there's something weird about them. I don't think they're just plain animals. I think yeah. they're people. Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. If it was just like in, um, you know, the Pacific Northwest, Canada, Alaska, I would think, you know, it's an unknown primate hominid species. But the fact that this stuff is happening, like in populated areas in like Florida and um, even like St. Louis, you know, it, there's something weird going on. Yeah. Thank you. He says uh, that one walking right beside me, I couldn't see it. It was right, I know it was there. It was right there, and I couldn't see it. It was there. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's disturbing. And that just lets you know that even if you don't see or hear anything, there could be something around you and you have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tom, I really appreciate you for taking the time today to talk to me. And I'm sorry it's taken me a while to get in, in contact with you. But, yeah, you did an excellent yes. job. And um, I got your email and everything that you des- described in the email. So I know there's a lot of stuff that you either forgot or didn't have time to write down. But I think I got a, a bulk of everything. And it really paints a clear picture for me what's going on at the lake. If you ever make it down here, get all of me. I'll take you out to a tea on a tour down there. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good to me. And um, perhaps we can set it up here in the near future and we can go check out these areas. Yeah. Okay. I'll take you fishing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love to go fishing. And that's the only way to have Bigfoot activity is to be out there experiencing the great outdoors and just spending time in nature. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tom, I appreciate everything, and thank you so much for talking about your encounters on the channel. And um, if you have anything else that you want to talk about in the future, just contact me. Or if you have any more experiences or encounters, let me know. And, um, yeah, keep in touch, my friend. All right. All right. You and your wife have an excellent day, and I will talk to you later. All right. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right, Tom, thank you very much for sharing your Bigfoot encounters with all of us here on Sasquatch Theory. And it certainly sounds like you've had a lot of Bigfoot encounters and experiences at the lake. And I would like to go there one day with you and possibly do a video interview to see all these areas and just to see what it's like out there at the lake. I recently interviewed a guy named Andrew who had a Bigfoot encounter at Greenville Park. I'm not sure what the park is called, but it's like a bike trail. And he claims that he was at Lake Wapapella one day at the spillway and he heard a large tree crash down. It's hard to say if it was Bigfoot or just some type of natural occurrence, but it does seem to line up with Tom's experiences and encounters. Tom mentioned that he gets this bad feeling at the spillway, so there's probably something there. If you guys enjoyed listening to this episode, please like and subscribe. And if you have a Bigfoot encounter that you would like to share with me here on the channel, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. I appreciate all of you for listening. Be blessed. Take care. And until the next one.